Hey folks, I'm Austin Silva with the One Wheel Factory team here to share the proper technique when swapping your GTS motor. Okay, let's get started. So some of the things you'll need, uh, you need a stand, you need a board. You're gonna need a GTS motor, obviously. Having some spare hardware is always nice. You definitely want fresh axle bolts with anti-vibration paste. You're gonna need a torque wrench and Torx plus 45 bit. You have electric driver. Other things you might want uh, a pick. These bumpers, when they contact the ground, sometimes the plastic can wear over the screw. Also, you can get dirt and debris in the screw. So it's just nice to have something to clean that out. Something I also don't have, um, but would be good to have is just a rag. Um, make sure you're cleaning off where you're placing the screws just so that there's a clean, even surface. Um, like I was saying earlier, if you have a little bit of dirt that's underneath the screw, um, even if you torque that down properly, if the dirt works loose over time, the screw could come loose. So let's get started. Um, go ahead and place the one wheel face up with the handle towards you. And I get our TP25. Go ahead and remove your fender, fender delete. Careful not to lose your screws. Another thing that makes this a lot easier is removing this mag handle. Got this long three millimeter bit here. Now we're gonna flip this over and we're going to have our clip side facing us, which is over here. So we're gonna remove the front bumper. Like I was saying earlier, if there's any debris covering these, just work that up with a pick, pull them off. And sometimes you can kind of put some lateral force against the screw to pull it up. Um, if you can't, just go ahead and flip it over and uh, let the screw drop out. Okay, we're gonna remove the front bumper here. Be sure not to have your fingers inside because uh, this is a closing void. So if it's a new bumper like this, you can just pull it off pretty easy. If it's an older bumper and it's got some dirt and debris, it might be a little bit harder. So you can kind of uh, leverage it by um, having your fingers up top here and pushing against the uh, foot pad. So like that and then sliding it off. Okay, so uh, next is the cable covers. Uh, if you're using the electric driver, make sure you're using this uh, extension. So here's the, the first really important part here. This cable retainer clip needs to be fully removed before you mess with this plug. I'm gonna give an example of what not to do first and the damage that can be done by it. Um, and then I'll go ahead and show you the proper way to do it. So if this is half connected or fully connected, what can happen is if you're going to pull on this cable, see that click? That click was one of the teeth on the retainer clip. That can cause a lot of issues. Like I was saying, if one, one of the teeth aren't holding it in, this cable naturally wants to get pulled out to the side. What's gonna happen is this whole plug is gonna be uh, not seated on one side and that's gonna arc. It's gonna be exposed to moisture, um, it's gonna arc, and that could not only compromise the plug and the motor, but also, uh, the connection in the controller. So so a lot of damage can be done if you perform this step incorrectly. So be sure to follow this process carefully. If you do manage to break a retainer clip, we have the replacement kits available on our website. They're super simple. You just clip off the old one and press on the new one. So the proper way is to fully loosen this retainer clip until it moves back and forth. Then you're gonna wanna take this cable on this side and you don't have any room to go back, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this cable 
out of the rail channel and that'll allow the whole cable to move backwards. Okay, so that we're gonna pull it out like that. Grab your TP45. We're gonna loosen up these bolts. Okay. Just gonna take the head off here and work this out. You can keep using the torque wrench if you want. This is a little bit faster. Actually, you can see on these bolts, even though this is a brand new board, um, just the act of putting the bolt in and taking it out, all the paste is still dispersed in the thread. And so even on a brand new board, we'll go ahead and toss that in and that'll give uh, an even um, distribution of that paste. All right, and the only other thing left to do is to pull the motor out as you pull it up. Make sure the cable is clear, pull it straight up. And you probably have axle block fall out. We're gonna put our other motor in. Inside the rail here, there's a guide, these lines here. So you want your cable void up. And then this lines up with those uh, guides. So if you just hold it there, you're gonna take your wheel and on your axle there are notches. So you're gonna face those notches facing down like that. And try your best to just set the motor straight in. See up here, this axle should be aligned with this axle block. And since it's not, that tells me that notch is just slightly off. So what we'll do is just take our fingers, lift the axle up a little bit and shift it side to side till it drops in just like that. Okay, and then uh, put our brand new axle bolts in. So with these, just go ahead and Put them in a couple of threads by hand. This ensures that uh, it's aligned properly and you're not putting any uh, amount of torque on them in the event that they aren't aligned. And we're not gonna torque them all the way down. We're just gonna seat them. So we'll basically screw them in until they stop and then we'll Go to the other side. I'm gonna check to make sure our torque wrench is set at 35 Newton meters. And if you've never used a torque wrench before, basically just tighten until you hear a click. And that's gonna be your torque setting. Okay, and now we're gonna put the cable back in. So go ahead and leave the cable outside of the rail channel. And since it's a new cable, we're gonna have to orientate it ourselves. So these three pins here are gonna go on the bottom. And this one wheel logo is gonna go on the top. Make sure uh, to line it up first and then put it into the plug. Um, don't get it close and then try and find it. Even though these pins are protected, you still risk damaging the pins by putting it up to that surface and moving it back and forth. So just line it up first. Keep the cable out here. Hold the cable with the other hand. And that goes right in, just like that. Now before putting any pressure on this ring here, we're gonna rotate this retainer clip until it's free because right now it's outside of the lock. So we're gonna rotate it until it moves free. And then we're gonna finish pushing it in. And then we're gonna lock the retainer clip. So just twist it until it stops. Okay, and you can feel it hard stop there. 
So that's good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the cable in the rail channel. Okay, now we're gonna replace the cable covers, just like this. Um, doesn't matter which one goes on which side, they're both the same. Just make sure the longer side is facing the rail. And we're gonna put the bumper on. Go long screws in the front. Short screws always go on into the rail. Okay, and then we'll flip it over. Uh, we'll put the mag handle on first. So the curve faces in. This little magnet on the left side there. Slip the bolt in. And we're gonna put our Fender delete on, so when you have a mag handle, don't put it straight on. You're gonna wanna set the fender delete against the tire on that side, and then have that over, and it'll just slip right in. Just press those clips in. Voila! Just turn this on. It works. And we're good to go. Thanks for watching the video. Um, all of the parts are available on the website. Go check it out. Like right now, go check it out.